Look at us! Two already! I'm on 17! Hey guys, 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 what? What do you want? What's going on here? Well, we've just got a little game going on who could kill the most. People, people, who could kill the most? Yeah. People are dying here. Well, yeah, but I mean... Loads! Just... Right. Of people are dying. My friend's just look. Terry's just gone. Yeah, we did. I didn't kill. He's him. just gone. Is it the? Is it the? We're just doing the orcs and no, the other high stuff. No, but it's fun, is it? What fun is in this? We're right? These elves have friend. turned up out of nowhere, and look at all them. They're dying. And what? You having a laugh? Uh, we're not laughing that much. It's no, but you're having you know. a joke with each other. We're just trying to beat each other. Yeah. Don't try and beat each. Look, try and help us out, okay? It's just between you two, isn't it? Well, I only killed two. He's killed seventeen of the buggers. Featuring me, Ben Pryor, and... AJ Jenks. And... Christopher Weeks. Oh, boys, we're back again, aren't we? This is good. Crikey. I have to say that your introduction is my least favourite. Really? Yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. surprised by that. Disingenuous. No, it's... because I think everyone... I don't believe a word you're saying. Wow, well, Should we do a poll? Who believes what Ben Pryor's saying? Yeah, we yeah. will do a poll. I'll get that I'll tell you what, there will be one right answer if he does it, so... Yeah, one right answer will be yes or no. A poll should be... Lots of people putting their opinions and then a percentage. Not to, this is the right answer to the poll. All right, okay, well, I'll put a poll on then. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Wow. Can I continue? Yeah, Things go are on. really heavy. Go on. Welcome back to 8 Daisy <laughs> Geek. Come on now. Oh, already. Already. I've annoyed him, I can tell. You, you've smashed in already. What are we talking about, Pryor? Hello and welcome back. You've done <laughs> it. <laughs> already. Go. What are we talking about? Today we are talking about the Two Towers, the Lord of the Rings, part two this is. Part two. Part two, because we didn't manage to finish it last time, no, so it's a big we're continuing, film. kicking back off where we where we left off, starting again now, but we're in a different <coughs> location, aren't we boys? Oh yeah, we've moved, oh, we? Yeah, yeah. Where are we, Weeks? We're in Shrewsbury. Crikey, that's And I have to say, wrong. Shrewsbury's a lovely place. Mm -hmm. I'm it really enjoying it. Shrewsbury. Not that I... Oh, do you call it Shrewsbury? It is pronounced Shrewsbury. No, it isn't. It's, it's called Shrewsbury. It's Shrewsbury. Mm, it's pronounced Shrewsbury. Well, I... Uh, my, my sister used to live literally up the road, and I used to come here a lot when I was a kid, and we always used to call it Shrewsbury. You are all wrong. Oh, no! Well, okay. <laughs> do another poll about that. This is good. Yeah, about that. Lots of Insta uh, content. Right, so <laughs> we got to... Um, the the black gate. We, get, we got to the Black Gate with Fredo and Sam and Schmigel. Oh, uh, Gollum, is he going? Um, we got to everyone leaving Edoras on the way to Helm's Deep. We did. And uh, the Ents are just chatting. Yeah, well, we haven't got to the Ent moot, have we? No. Should we take them? Um, that's what it's called. That's very funny. Why is he laughing at that? That's very funny. It's literally what it's called. Is it? You must yeah, have done it on Lord of the Rings Middle Earth when you get an Ent moot. <laughs> it's still fun. Oh, it's, so funny. it's still fun. Ent moot. You know, you know we got an Ent moot in. Uh, Lord of the Rings Middle Earth, and you'd, you'd get Ents from it. You'd get different classes of Ents as well. No, I don't think I, I don't remember that. Oh, I played that game. Yeah, I did. I oh. just don't remember that. I don't know why you don't remember that. It's a shame. Also, is moot that? is a real word as well. It yeah, is. but it's just a funny word, and it just got me. I don't know why. <laughs> It's the, We're it's being the very informative yeah, today. Yeah, really yeah. Yeah. It's Ent and Moot together that are very funny. Right, that's what I does it for you. Why, yeah. So yeah. We've, we'll, we'll continue. We've got to, Shall we continue? Yeah, yeah what please, a good idea. Please. So the Ents, we got to the Black Gate. Uh, the next bit is a skillioth, isn't it, really? But Oh, yeah, with Frodo and Sam. Let's, let's come back about, to that. Let's talk about the Ents. Yeah. Um, because, again, I've, I've said this already, but this always... When you've got a skillioth going on and you've got a Helm's Deed going on... Mm. And they used to cut back to this. I'd always get slightly agitated. This is the slow part of the film. You definitely. Slow is. Uh, a, a, but that's an what I mean. The Ents themselves do say, "Don't be hasty." You know, they, that's what they're all about. But we're at, we're at the Ent moot. We are. And they are deciding mm. whether to join the world in this war that's going on, yeah. or just to go back and live their lives by themselves yeah. and not get involved in seclusion. And you've got Mary and Pippin, which are trying to not force them, recruit them. Yeah, I suppose they yeah, are in a way. Yeah, recruit them in, you know, and uh, and and get them to fight. 
Yeah. Um, Isengard. That's but the Ents, uh, they're very, they're very um, reticent, aren't they? Well, they they don't want to fight. I think they think that they can be, still be outside and not have to be involved. Yeah. And, and you know, they, they're they very stuck they in their be... way, aren't they? And no, they are. I mean, they're an to, ancient to, race. The, yeah, to their sure. knowledge as well, nothing has changed to them. That's yeah. right, yeah. There's the no, forest is the same. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they haven't seen any difference. So, and that's why they pick. But again, it's, no. it's fighting for their future almost, but they don't really know because it's been yeah. so long. But yeah, exactly. ultimately, the. The, uh, got they, no they will cut all the trees down eventually because they. Well, well, well this is the thing: is so when they uh, are rejected, and Treebird says, "I will take you home." Mary Pippin, yeah. T- said to Mary Pippin, "I'll take you home," and then they start walking, and then um, Pippin, yeah, realizes. Take us south. Yeah, because he realizes, if we go south, we will see some of the destruction. Yeah, some evidence that has happened. And then, what does what is it? What does Treebird say? I've always liked walking. Oh yes. Somehow like it always feels like going walking. downhill. Yeah, yeah. That's going nice. south, which is fantastic. Yeah. But yeah, so then we jump back, and we're at the. Uh, we're watching the people of Rohan. Oh yeah. Um, walk, but. Oh yeah, in their in their wagon train, not dissimilar to the Lannister <laughs> wagon train, and you think. <laughs> It's very vulnerable, isn't it? Let's be honest. Well, what happens, eh? What happens? Well, they get attacked by the Warg Riders. Oh. Send out your war riders! Ah! I love how the Orcs are always delighted to receive any order at all. Yeah. It's like, oh yeah, I was hoping you were going to say that. Yeah. yeah. They must get pretty bored. Yeah. Are we cutting down more logs? Yeah. Oh. Cool. Okay. Right, we'll chuck we... this tree down here. That'll be a moment of excitement. <laughs> right. Great. But then the war riders are sent out, and we've got a yeah. couple of little scouts that go out. And are absolutely... That's a great line from Orlando Bloom. I think that might be my favourite. When well, you remember when he, um... Uh, doesn't he taste the blood? And he mm. goes, A scout! Yeah. And he spits out the blood. That's yeah. a great line. It's awesome. Lovely line. And also I... he shoots him off the top of the hill. Yeah. Oh, my but God. But that beautiful slow motion. And Lovely. then Gimli's riding up oh, behind him. The way he gets on the horse. And Legolas does this swing... Mm. And Unbelievable. jumps straight on the hook. He does that a lot throughout the film, yeah. and it's awesome. He's got a lot so, of uh, well, a lot of moves. The thing is, is that Legolas, well, elves are so light. They yeah. are, as we, and we talked about the, the snow. We yeah. About yeah. snow. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> but then this beautiful charge, which is kind of, I mean, it is the first time you see men in battle. I suppose it is, yeah. And how they are enough. against these war riders, and there's a beautiful charge, and when they hit, it's mm. heavy, kind of like B.O.B., Battle of the... Yeah. 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 Well, you say, I think you could say bastards because oh, it's not it's not being used as a swear word. Didn't have to go that low, did you? Okay. okay. Um, but but yeah, the yeah, it, has, it has that kind of feel to it. Yeah. And again, oh. the music cuts out as soon as they mm. meet. And it's, it's a and real it's, thing. To be fair, it's a very quick fight. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a scrap, isn't it? Really? Yeah. Because there's not that many of them on either side. Uh, it's not a glorious battle at all. It's no. Uh, there's only about what. 30, yeah. 40 each side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the wargs are like the dirty and vicious creatures. Yeah. Well, this isn't... This is just... I think Saruman's plan is to weaken them. Yeah. And, you know, create a lot of tension. Yeah, scare absolutely. Them a lot like that. He, th- this isn't his plan to destroy them all. No, no. But, yeah, and then we see Aragorn... Yeah. ...having this little fight. And uh, he's... Yeah, he gets trapped. Arms caught, isn't trapped he? Trapped on the saddle and the horse goes over. And off he goes. And then yeah. we're like... Huh? Is that there? Yeah. He's, he's dead. It's yeah, I mean, obviously, but not like that. Yeah, well, well no, because he's definitely never think... dead. It's and if falls off a cliff, they're dead. That's well, you it. would think God. so. No, that's you it. Fall okay, off right. Have you fallen off a cliff? No, I've seen lots of people fall off cliffs. Science. You've seen people fall off cliffs. You don't just say Dark. that and then say science. In films and stuff like that. Oh, oh right, okay. Yeah, fine. but films are films. I'm talking real life. Have you seen someone fall off a cliff and they die? Seen lots of no, people. but I imagined that they would. Uh, do you know there was a study done to see the height that you could fall off something and survive? And what was it? Um, I can't remember. But I think it's like 20 feet and you have a 50% chance of living. Uh, cool. Hit me at 30 and there's a 50% chance I'll die. <laughs> yeah, I remember Hit me that. at 40 uh, and do you remember that? That's, that's so good. good. God, this is dark stuff. All right, sorry. But, Let's get back to it. Yeah, I, yeah, I interrupted that train. And then, and then, um, uh, yeah, so they, um, they then realise, okay, we need, we need to move. We need to move. Oh, uh, yeah. There's that lovely line from John Reese davis though. Um... Oh no, it's uh, that's in uh, Helm's that, Deep. That's later. Yeah, I, I know which line you're going to do. Yeah, okay, we'll come back to that. But um, but yeah, this little plot. Then, what do we think about this plot of Aragorn falling? Do you think it's nonsense? Because it's not in the books. It is not in the books. books. No, no, not wow. at all. I it's, think it's okay. just to in, in create a little bit of tension. I th- it, it's, it's to create tension. I also think there's a bit because I think 
they wanted something with Arwen and probably. Yeah, and they're probably they using their scenes as well. Oh, and in fairness, they, these scenes are a rehash because Arwen was originally going to come to Helm's Deep. Yeah, and those the scenes that they make are from that that filming block. Yeah, and then they were like, oh, well, how can we use these because we're going to have Haldir lead them instead. Uh, and so they reuse them in the sequence. I'm so shocked that that's I, not in the book because for me that was such a pivotal moment. Was of it the really? Film. Yeah. Yeah. So for me, I because was always like, well, I know this doesn't happen. This is nonsense. What's well, going on? Uh, yeah. Whereas my point of view was that is incredible. Their plans have changed completely because he's gone. Yeah. Their their almost leader who's been you know helping them well, yeah. through all this journey is, is pretty much dead, is what they think yeah. anyway. Yeah. So mm, what on earth are they going to do? I, I remember thinking that was brilliant. Well, well I, I mean that's an interesting point. I, of view. I, I just I loved it because it just gave a little bit more uh, when time is starting to show the distance yeah. Yeah. between those two. And also mm. connect I love anything to do with their connection because they yeah. both act it just beautifully. Yeah, exactly. You believe that they're yeah. together in yeah. oh. and you know there's that heartache inside yeah. Aragorn that's just killing him. Yeah, absolutely. But he, but he knows he's got this job to do as well. Yeah. And yeah, I mean you can't you can't go wrong. Obviously, all of that is an addition as well. That's sort of taken from the appendices yeah. of the books. Yeah, and um, also just kind of nice. Just he has a bit of a relationship with his horse. Yeah, yeah that's, oh, lovely. that's that's a lovely. lovely scene. When his horse wakes him up. Yeah, yeah. he bought that horse at the and, end, you know. And also, I think it's also a great because mm -hmm. he loved yeah, that horse so much. Wow. So when Aragon obviously gets back on the horse and rides mm. off, and he sees get back on the horse. He's <laughs> he, he sees, he'll be fine. He sees the Isengard army. Right. Yeah. So that's which the I think plot point that. That's a yeah, a great plot point that that yeah. has brought because to know the scope of what they're dealing he with. He rides yeah. quick, and what are you up to? You on your phone whilst we're doing a podcast? Unbelievable! Goodness me! Were you looking up that study? Were you? Yeah, I was. To be honest, <laughs> I was actually looking up to see if the horse is, is dead or not. Oh, he must be by now. How long do horses live? Fifteen years, twenty years? No, that's a bit of an interesting, riveting conversation. The lifespan of you're a the horse. one. Just... <laughs> you're on your phone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is all right. Come Goodness on, mate. So yeah, this is bad. We get that, you we get, have said that. We get no that, one would have known. We get that. We get that plot point, which yeah. is great. We see the armor. We see how massive it is. Yeah. And then thousands, tens of thousands. And then obviously, just before that, they all arrive at Helm's Deep. Yeah. And uh, yeah, into the Hamburg. A Eowyn says that fantastic oh, yeah. line. Um, where is? Where is Aragorn? Where is Gander? <laughs> well, Tell decide. me, where is Gander? <laughs> he fell. Oh, Lord Aragorn. <laughs> yeah. He fell. Literally. Oh, it's actually, beautiful delivery. Pretty much the same line. Uh, it's very similar, yeah. Uh, it's just, the Lord Aragorn, where is he? That's what she says, isn't it? Oh, yeah, but Griff. He fell. He, he does oh, it. I he love said him. Griff Reese Jones. Griff Reese Jones. <laughs> <laughs> there's a casting yeah. dream. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Very different film. Oh, but he fell. But he fell. <laughs> and they, <laughs> yeah, they genuinely think that he's gone. Given his yeah. face, then it's just. It's amazing. Oh my god. It's the same way that he does. Uh, it's one of their wee belts. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah, it's the same. Yeah, it's yeah. Classy, classy acting because he really yeah. he's got all those prosthetics on, so he really doesn't have that much to play with. Yeah. Very, very nice delivery. He, that. he hated this. Yeah. Well, he had well. big reactions to them, didn't yeah. he? Oh, god. Yeah, it sounds like a nightmare. Everything that he went through, yeah. really. But, but um, uh, worth it, obviously. Yeah, but then Aragorn obviously then arrives. Yeah. There's a beautiful moment with him and Legolas. Yeah. Because obviously Legolas has taken his necklace. Yeah. Which is called... What, his pendant? Oh, the... the um, oh, what's it called? Is that the Evenstar? Yeah, Evenstar, yeah. Because yeah. it's named it's after fair. her. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that, that lovely, lovely pendant. And then we get an absolute badass entrance. Okay. All the lads are chatting... Right, in the Great Hall yeah. at Helm's Deep, and then, boom! Oh, yeah. The that, doors open. In all the trailers. You know, yeah. That's what I, said, I was about to say, that. In the trailers, that's the one thing that um, yeah. made me like, yeah. I, I, he's Isn't opening doors, and it he's, makes me want to watch a yeah. film. He's sweaty, he's messed up, yeah. but by God, that man looks attractive. He knows how to open a door. Oh, he, he does. does. Goodness gracious, yeah. does he know. But here you are, now it's bubbling. It's bubbling. Yeah. Aragorn's there. Yeah. Okay, they're all chatting about, well, he's obviously says, 10,000 and 10,000! Yeah, Theoden doesn't know what to do. Yeah. The lesser so son of. There's either Brendan the Fathers. two options. Aragorn says, you know, we should ride out. Mm. And uh, Theoden says, no, we're staying here. And then oh, obviously they start barricading the whole thing. Similar to the Ents in a way. It's it's the choice of action That's or, true, yeah. or, or not. Or, yeah. Or which is quite off. interesting. Or yeah, or just staying put. I mean, they're in the Hornburg, so they think, and they're relying on history as well. The yeah. Hornburg is the deeping wall. Um, the big wall has never been broken. The Hornburg's yeah. never been breached. Mm. 
funny thought. A king of men that's stuck in his ways and a king of trees that's stuck in his ways. The king of trees. Yeah, the king of trees. Treebeard would love that. I think Treebeard deserves to have the title of the yeah, tree of, uh, king of trees. Right, okay. He hasn't, though. He's well, called a lot of things. He's not called that. But he, yeah, what are the names that he's called? He's got again? Millions of names. He's called Fangorn, of yeah, course. Of course. He's called Treebeard. Yeah. And a million others. <laughs> <laughs> At least. List them. <laughs> <laughs> he's called Barky Boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's called that in his youth. All right, yeah, Barky yeah. Man. Le- Leafy Lenny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway. Yes. Sorry. So we're that. What did you guys think when you first saw uh, Helm's Deep? Unbelievable. Well, obviously, it's not Helm's Deep, is it? It's. Yeah. It's what? That's what I said. The castle's called. What's the huh? castle called? Remember what the castle I've already said it a couple of the times. The place is called Helm's Deep, but the castle is called. I can't hear you. Probably. Okay. I, we can't remember the time yeah. to, to let this yeah. happen. The, it's the called Hornberg. the Hornberg. You remember that? Yeah. He doesn't. Yeah. A bit like a hat called a Humburg. <laughs> there you go. That what do you, you what do you think of it, though, when you first saw it? Oh, it's amazingly impressive. And again, it's a miniature, a bigature yeah. that they made. A bigoture, that's literally what they call it. Um, oh, it's just an incredibly impressive thing. The wall is awesome. Yeah. Uh, and I, in the end, we haven't seen them yet, but the um, the horn of Helm, Hammerhand, who it's named after, hey. uh, is really cool as well. When Gimli gets his lips around it. What a noise. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> Look, it's an opportunity. Today I couldn't miss it. not going Good well. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Why does Gimli do that? Why doesn't one of the Rohirrim do that? He's or got, someone he's, who's got, got some, some sort of affinity with the history of the place. He, no, so he does. He's got the most kind of like... The dwarves are natural sprinters, Lumpy. in fairness. The dwarves are natural sprinters? <laughs> Very dangerous over long distances. Short distances? <laughs> Very dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> over short Ridiculous. Distances. Um, um, I'd love different to see casting. that. But yeah, and what did you think of it? Did you like it? Yeah, I loved I, it. Oh. <laughs> I adored it. I thought it was beautiful. I thought it isn't massive. Which is great because obviously no, it's not. They're in packing the, them in. But in but in the books, obviously, it talks about how it goes into yeah. the mountain. But I always liked that. Yeah, that was really cool. And the, the glittering caves which are inside, yeah. which Gimli is Gimli's fascinated by yeah. later on. Very different to um, Edoras and Medjiseld. Yeah, very different. Like that's all wood and Viking. Yeah. Pyrus being a little imp. I can't what is stand wrong with it. you today? <laughs> Why you're, so, you're like you're giddy. I don't know. I've got the giggles, so just carry on. <laughs> yeah. He's wearing a Game of Thrones t-shirt yeah. because he thought we were doing Game of Thrones today. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't need to know that. Again. <laughs> they don't know. Oh, Ridiculous. Oh. But yeah, so um, yeah, I yeah. thought it was fantastic. Well, Amazing. so we need to jump over because at this point, um, um, we see. Um, Sam and Frodo and Gollum that are just camping. Oh, right, yeah. Well, so, this is the Brace of Conies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is great. Um, taters? A- What's taters, taters, eh? You know, potatoes. Boil them, mash them, stick them in the stew. I said, boil them, mash them, stick them in the stew. I said, boil them, mash them, stick them in the stew. <laughs> that was one of my favourite periods of uh, my life. <laughs> All that was happening, I was like, this is just great. Yeah, yeah. More like this. It really was. There's a lot of Two Towers stuff that was yeah, made Yeah, there really there. was. Taking the Obvious to Isengard, obviously the yeah. classic. Yeah. But Isn't boil that funny? Them, I don't really remember any from Return of the King. No. But yeah, but yeah we're, we're, we're just getting that they've obviously taken a different way and they then yeah. see the Easterlings. But they're now in Gondor, aren't they? They're in Ithilien. They're, yeah. Which is yeah. why Faramir and his lot are, are, yeah. are lurking about the joint. But yeah, they see an olivant. Mm. Well, Gaffer will never believe this. Lovely. And I did love those lines. Yeah. And then they get caught by yeah. Rangers. Oh. The Rangers of Athelion, Faramir. Who I loved. And on Battle of Middle Earth, they were insane. I yes. loved to fight with the Rangers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were so good. Yeah. And we meet Faramir. At yeah. this point, we obviously don't know that he is Boromir's brother. No, we yeah. don't. We don't. What did you think of these scenes then, when they're hiding in the caves, and you've got the ancient pool that's just down there? Oh, it's quite. I mean, I love the. I like the the hiding behind the waterfall cave. I think that's really cool. Mm. That's very evocative, you know. Um, and it's the secret place of Gondor where they 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 hide out, and they're very tense scenes because we've already seen. But by, by this point, once they start talking and they reveal that they were in Rivendell and uh, yeah. that Boromir was there, and that Boromir wasn't. The captain of the company, which is always, mm. I think, really interesting, and it must be so interesting for Faramir because he's never known Boromir as anything but exactly, yeah. a captain of Gondor, a lord among men. And he's like, my God, there was someone more important that wasn't Gandalf. Well, there's How that amazing. lovely little sequence where the ring starts to take Frodo. Yeah, 
and Sam tells him to go away and oh. then just comes out with the whole story and says, Yeah. You want to know what happened to Boromir? You want to know why your brother died? Yeah. He tried to take the ring after swearing an oath. Oh. He tried to kill him. Amazing. Wow, I remember that. It's great. <laughs> In fairness, that is a great bit of I've work wa- by I've Sean watched Astin. that scene quite a bit, to be fair, because it is fantastic. Yeah. But it kind of knocks Faramir. So obviously he's at a kind of, you know, turning tables kind of point where he could, if he turns left, mm. he could help these guys Turn out left. and send them on their way. If he turns right, oh, bit of a Doctor Who man. Yeah, there you go. If he turns right, he will take the ring back, give it to Denethor. Yeah. yeah. Which would most probably turn Gondor to be kept into some deep dark place, <laughs> not to be touched except yeah. at the last hour of peril. Oh, he's a great actor. Yeah, he can't great. wait to get to him. Mm. He's great. Do a good impression. <sighs> I can't take anything he says seriously. I meant that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, and uh, I think Faramir is very much, very he's much played. The, like the, <laughs> the perils of being in a theatre. This is a uh, inner departure from the books. Uh, you know I love to talk about the books this is a departure from the books because in the books Faramir has no interest in the ring at all no he's like even if it was by the side of the road I wouldn't pick it up mm-hmm. this is what he says and he sends them on their way he's um, very so, much a mean yeah injecting this this tension and um, but I, th- I think it goes along with what's happening in the two other stories as well yeah Treebird doesn't know what to do yeah um, bloody Th- uh, Theoden yeah. has no idea what to yeah, do. Yeah, it's true. They're out of their depth, I suppose. Faramir has no idea what to do. This is the one ring. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Because it, it, they, there has been this age of legends and heroes, and it's sort of passed, and they're into the sort of workaday, everyday world. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, these things step out of legend. They yeah. say that about... Um, who is it who says that there's there's creatures stepping as if from legend? Some One of the characters says that. Um, this is in the books, of course. They wouldn't yeah. say such a thing in the films. But it's, it really is that sort of feeling. Um, of them just coming out of nowhere, you know. Uh, but I think it works really well. I think injecting that little bit of tension uh, is yeah. a very sensible choice by Peter Jackson. Yeah. And um, he's been downtrodden all his life. He thinks yes, this will... very much second to Boromir. Yeah. Fascinating. This, he thinks this will bring... My father will love me now yeah. for bringing this back and oh. not Boromir. Oh. It's such an interesting character. Mm. Like, if you... if I, I always thought... In, um, obviously, you'd love to be a member of the Fellowship, but if you had to play another part in the films, Faramir's a great... Faramir's one. great. Very cool. But obviously he says no, and then takes him to Osgiliath. Yeah. Which is this absolute battleground, reminds me kind of a like Berlin-esque. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's Definitely. been the last days of the six. war kind of thing. Yeah. Because like, he's going to take them to yeah. Minas Tirith. Mm. Osgiliath was the capital once upon a time. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Right. It really was. Yeah. And I, lo- I love Osgiliath because I've played a lot of Shadow of War. Yeah. Where, you know, you're, you're defending all these places in Mordor mm. or on the borders of Gondor and it's it's so good because it's set 60 years before all of this going on oh yeah of course and you can kind of tell you know that the orcs have just blasted through Gondor and yeah. they're slowly and shortly just making their way through and you see the kind of desperation when you get to Ascoliath all of them hiding behind the rocks yeah. because they have no yeah. idea where the arrows are coming from or anything like that all of uh, the soldiers just yeah, impure. Just, they have no idea what's happening. Yeah, Osgiliath is this massive place, and there's so many bridges and so many yeah. entrances. Mm. Impossible to defend, really. Yeah, and it's... you see, they just haven't got the men. Yeah, there just isn't anything there. So I loved our entrance to Osgiliath. Yeah, it seems like they're not designed for a capital city that's very difficult to defend. Well, it was in a time of peace. Yeah, it's such a thing, short peace, which know? is why they retreated to Minas Tirith. Right. Yeah. Um, and they had Minas Morgul at the time as well. Yeah. Um, that was their city, and that got corrupted later on. But this is when Gondor yeah. was at its absolute height. Osgiliath was the capital. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But it, no, it's it's a it's a great sequence, and it's nice that Frodo and Sam are there because obviously they don't go in the, there in the books. Sean Aston no. says that. Just all. Um, they just get it straight. Yeah, they 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 leave Faramir at that point. But no, it's nice to see it. There, it's a, it, in this film there are a few extra sequences and yeah. bulked up sequences. But I think generally speaking, they make all the right decisions in this film. Yeah. Mm. Then there's Every, nothing really controversial. Everything's done right, which yeah. then takes us back to Helm's Deep. Because yeah. now, yeah. you know, it's getting late. They've sent all the women and children into the caves. Yeah, hide them away. They're, you know, they're, they're what's the name in their swords? Sharpening them, that's the word. Sharpening their swords. And it's getting late, and Aragorn and Legolas have a bit of a... Yeah, surprising from Legolas, really. I think Legolas just knows that there is no chance. He's been around for so long. Yeah. He kn- there is no chance we're going to win this. Is it that he's above hope in that sort of way? I think he is, yeah. Is it that? I think he just knows this is pointless. Yeah. Why are we here? Yeah. 
Leave and them to their fate, let's go. Yeah. It's selfish stuff. And but I think he knows that the, the, the reason why they've been sent out from this, from Fellowship of the Ring, this isn't the reason. No. We aren't here as the Fellowship to defend no. Rohan no. and help them out. The whole point of where they were going was to try and find Merry and Pippin. Yeah. And then after that, they got caught up in Rohan. Yeah. yeah. It's not, not really their war in that, yeah. in that, that sense. Or their Gandalf anyway. has left. Yeah. So Gandalf's disappeared off. What hope do we have? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's true. I think Aragorn just has... It is that kingly kind of... Yeah. And he is the leader of the group still. Yeah. yeah. And he knows, no, we have to stay. Yeah. This is this is the fight. Mm. So it, it's then night time, and then <gasps> they're just chatting, and then we hear Ah! Surprisingly really good. good. I saw both your faces wow. there. Wow. And I knew that was good. Yeah. Wow. I'm, I'm really impressed by that. That's very that... accurate. Ah! Oh, it's not as good. No, nah, didn't get the ah! yeah. Yeah. It's the two nose. Ah! Never yeah. Go, we're back on track. It'll never be as good as the first one, but fine. Yeah, will. <laughs> Who's turning up? The Urukai. No. Oh, you're talking about the elves? Yeah. So this is an interesting thing, isn't it? The elves suddenly coming out of nowhere. Again, not in the books. They're not in the books. Uh, they're off defending Lothlorien and uh, Mirkwood mm -hmm. and all that. And they've got enough issues themselves. You know, they leave the men to it at this point. Yeah, in, in like, in actual Middle Earth, the elves right now are in absolute hell. Oh yeah. Lothlorien is being, well, not destroyed, but being attacked yeah. daily. Constantly assailed. Daily, but. This, uh, it's a really interesting addition, and I think does it come out of the fact that they wanted Arwen to be with Aragorn at this point or initially? I think maybe it is something to do with that. I think it's a push of hope. I think that's the main reason mm. they just want to give them a little bit of hope because I think any audience member would think, yeah, they've got no chance. This yeah. is stupid. But for them to turn up, it's them to think, okay. And the little speech that he makes. Oh yeah. Where he says, "We come to honor that allegiance." Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. I the last that's, alliance. That's How dear. To show the desperation that yeah. this is. How dear. <laughs> the great come, man. That's coming it's up. Coming. Oh, it's wonderful. Um, but yeah, and then. Oh, it's a lovely moment. The scenes that I love most in this film is that little breath before the battle. Yeah. This battle is. Where a the cameras are going over the walls yeah. and going over the entire castle and you can see them all standing there yeah. and then suddenly that rain the rain yeah. is oh what a... that score comes on at the same time as <sighs> the rain is just there. and you can hear it on their armor that's the thing that's this this battle is all about the nitty-gritty yeah. it's in the mud it's yeah. in the rain it's in the dark the whole thing is terrifying it's brutal yeah it's not beautiful at all it's uh, so brutal oh. when you compare it to the battle for Minas Tirith. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Pelennor Fields, the charge of the Rohirrim, it's all romantic. This battle yeah. is just about survival. Yeah. yeah. I suppose that's a good thing about a middle film. You're surviving to get to the final. Yeah. If you don't get, if you don't make it through the third film, yeah. uh, the second film rather, yeah. you know, you'll never get well, out the other side. You're seeing how many people died for them to get to, you know, the third film. Yeah. You're seeing all of the hell oh that God, they went yeah. through. To get to that final phase, absolutely. It's like the it's um it's the Battle of Britain moment, mm. you know. Because if Rohan had fallen at this point, uh, Gondor would have Gondor fallen because there would, would be gone. no one there to save them. Yeah, it's the same thing. If Britain had fallen, you know, then the Americans wouldn't have anywhere to launch uh, D Day, etc. Yeah, it's, it's all, the same old thing. It's all done, and then you hear them marching, and you see oh. them coming, and you have that. You see the lights in the distance. Yeah, you see that one Uruk that's standing on the yeah. the uh, m massive stone. Yeah, and he just does that kind of point forward. They're very excited, aren't they, the Uruks? They're like... Oh, well, this is their big fun. This is the most yeah. fun they've had in weeks. Oh, absolutely. And they've then, been cooped up in bloody Isengard. And all they've had is bloody... Maggie Maggie bread. bread yeah. Three stinking weeks. Like, oh, I bet they've got loads of lovely stuff in there. Yeah, they've got chicken, they've yeah. got wine. Yeah. They love that sort of thing. They love chicken and wine. <laughs> Do you know what that is in French? What? Coco ban. Coco van. Yeah. Oh, you got—they've got the dish coco van in there, have they? Yeah. Well, chicken, and then they have some wine, so it's like a mixture. In their belly is a coco van. That's not how coco van's made. Might have been the first way it was ever made. Anyway, <sighs> they're all <laughs> fast approaching. Yeah. Uh, let me draw your attention to one extra. One extra. Mm -hmm. The man with no eye. Oh, you yeah. remember him? He goes, <laughs> and he so the story of that one is um, he was just an extra on set and he had an eye patch and Peter Jackson was intrigued by this and so he went up to him and was like, uh, mate, what's under your eye patch there? And the guy showed him and he was like, 
can we have that in the film? Uh, that he featured it as a result. Really? Isn't that awesome? So he legitimately had no eye, and um, Peter Jackson found it out and was like, oh, perfect. Yeah, oh, that's amazing. He is really such a cool. Weirdo. But then we got that little standoff. Yeah. They're marching up, there's this crazy loud sound of just their armour clanging together yeah. and stuff, and then oh. bang, silence. And they are just staring at each other. Yeah. From the walls all the way down to the floor, there's just silence. There's tension. Off. And then... Such tension. The archers are just there on hold. Yeah, on then, hold. And then Please hold. I've been on hold for ages. Are we firing or what? <laughs> sick of this. Boss, give us the all clear, will you? Come on. They're right there. <laughs> They're standing right in front of us. Not God. yet. Not yet. <laughs> More tension. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> they're all on the phone to Peter Jackson. No, not yet, not yet, <laughs> not yet. Now you're doing really well. <laughs> For some reason, this <laughs> Peter Jackson sounds like Rob Farris. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, not no. yet, not yet. Let's not go into that. Hey, hey, all right, anyway. <laughs> but there is that silence, and then <sighs> that guy. Bang! That guy. And then that <laughs> one orakai just slams to yeah, the ground. And the then, noise he makes. And then we have that. <laughs> <laughs> have you been practicing your Urukai noises? Have you? <laughs> Definitely have. But he's the, they, they see it and then the first one just goes, ah! And then that one that has like a, a lid kind of yeah. beak kind of goes, boy, boy, boy. And then they all start slamming. That's true. And it's kicking That's off. That's terrifying. And he then really... they all leg it towards the wall. He they really do. paints a picture, doesn't he? He really does. It's yeah. so vivid. Honestly, and then it's like an audio book. They all leg it towards the wall and then... They've they got their ladders. Aragorn just is like... Fire! <laughs> <laughs> and I just... It's great. And the elves below. Yeah. Such good shots, obviously. That's, that's great. When you have that shot on Aragorn and then he turns round yeah. with his sword and then you just see that there's like another... Thousand elves yeah. just at the back, and they fight so close. I know. It whips oh, yeah. past them. His um, drawing of his sword is epic. Mm. It's really, really yeah. cool. Not a moment is wasted in this film. That was in the trailer as well of him drawing yes, his sword. Yeah. It's just slowly. Oh, it's, just, it's wonderful. And so, so, so good. We're into this battle. This yeah. is kicking off. It is incredible. It, it's. It, I think it broke all of the molds for on-screen battles in films. Yeah. Yeah, Can you think of any battle that compares to it that isn't in Lord of the Rings? Anything that comes even close. Other than after it, I can yeah. think of after it, but not before Absolutely, it. and everyone's yeah. been trying to come up to it ever since. I think even Lord of the Rings were with Pelennor Fields and all yeah. that, and Minas Tirith. I think, for me, probably Battle of the Bastards is the closest. Yeah, yeah. And because that's it's, also dirty and yeah. real it's pure, water. Again, you know? all about survival. It's yeah, absolutely, yeah. It's all or nothing. If Jon Snow and all of the Stark army fail, that's it. Yeah, absolutely. The North is taken by the Bolts. And you kind of have the same level of tension as well because uh, both enemies, they absolutely hate them and they've had that rivalry for so long. It's all that tension built up to this moment. Yeah. And then it's kind of like all let loose in one hellish battle. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. The ladders are coming up and um, the Uruks... Oh, they're great as well, though. Do that with the teeth that come yeah. down. Yeah. Horrible metal teeth that yeah. come down. It really shows, like, the, it, you can tell this is Isengard. The, yeah. The kind of age of iron and steel. Yeah, and yeah. Because the, the, these me- these, those teeth have been sort of beaten into shape, yeah. and you can see that. Whereas Mordor, they are very different. Yeah. It's like, Mordor's more like elemental, isn't it? Yeah, it's like scraps. They put whatever yeah. they want on them, but they just push them out to fuck because there's so many. Yeah. Whereas these Urukai are s- trained. Yeah, it's it's very interesting, really. They are they are far superior in Was a lot of ways. The first one, the first guy that jumps off the ladders. Oh yeah. And swings his sword, takes down about five elves yeah. in one swing. Yeah. And you're just like, oh wow, this is okay. serious stuff. This this is pretty big. We should have sharpened these a bit more. But- <laughs> Why do you do that? <laughs> I hate this. It's become a thing now. It's but, become a thing. But yeah, and this, this battle is raging on. And at yeah. the same time, suddenly get that little sweep over to um, Treebeard and he walks out of the woods and sees right. everything chopped down. Yeah. Many of these were my friends. Yeah. And he gets angry. Yeah, he does a big, big shout and holler. Uh, <laughs> Now, we were having a conversation about this. Do you remember how they made that, how they made his voice, what it was that they did? Because I did tell you last week. Did you? I did. 
can't remember now. Oh, well, I'll tell you and you'll remember. So it's John Reese davis who voices Treebeard yeah. as well. Obviously, he does Gimli, and he's, he's also Treebeard. And instead of doing any digital effects on it, um, they asked him to speak as deeply as he could, and then they recorded it through a wooden megaphone oh, yeah. to make it sound like Brilliant. a tree. Wow. I mean, the, it's like, you're like, oh, Beautiful. great, a wooden megaphone, of course, because he's a tree. It makes perfect yeah. sense. But to think of it, yeah. to find the thing, and then be like, yep, great. Yeah. Not, I mean, it's oh unbelievable. God. A wooden megaphone? Yeah. Has that so ever been cool. used in any other application? I suppose it's just a really old... Like, they would have been wooden it's at some point, and then they got changed to whatever, plasticky metal. Wow. But amazing. But that, so then all of the ants come behind. Yeah. They were pretty close, weren't they? they yeah, they really were. Yeah, they were <laughs> stalking him. They got there quick. It would be yeah. awkward if they, he did do that. And then they went... Yeah. They'll be here in four days. <laughs> <laughs> They're very slow, just like me. <laughs> I'm wishing to know better! Brilliant. And then that beautiful music comes up and yeah. they start marching and then he just... Yeah. The Ents are going to war. Brilliant. It's brilliant. The and last then, march of the Ents is called. That, yeah. that sequence, isn't it? And then and bang, the, it jumps back, we're in Helm's Deep. Yeah. Things aren't going very well. No, they're not. not. Well, you think that at first because they they can get on top of the wall with the ladders but they can't get through obviously yeah. the wall is still too big but I think around these times though this is when they start bringing up the battle ram yeah to, oh for the to, gates yeah, yeah for the gates the gates are definitely the weak part yeah. of the whole thing definitely then they bring the battle ram up to the gates and they lift up those super big ladders yeah 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 which oh, they fire the things from the catapults yeah. too yeah. yeah which smash back yeah through the top of the wall and, and they kill destroy, about a dozen yeah, yeah. they destroy yeah. something they the destroy <laughs> And they destroy. <laughs> I was going to say they destroy some of the wall, and then they you interrupt them. <laughs> and they, they shoot one of the guys as well. Someone yeah. gets shot by one. You're like, yeah. my God. They're pretty big, aren't they? Exploded <laughs> by this massive bolt. Yeah. And, and whilst all this is going on, this is obviously a, a ploy. Yeah. This is what they're doing. This is a ploy to get all of the archers that are on yeah, the yeah, yeah. normal wall just to fire up. And, well, in fact, Aragon shouts over and tells them to shoot over there and stuff yeah. like that to hit the side. Yeah, yeah, to we, get the battering ram down. And whilst that's happening, you've got this guy with this massive sparkler. Yeah. Are you sure it's a sparkler? Yeah. Oh, it's a sparkler. It's a big one. It's a is big... Is he sprinting? He is. And he's does sprinting. he look very mean? He does. Uh, he does, yeah. He's painted all, painted all white. And... Does he go into that little crevice kind of well, thing? Well, hang on, we're not there yet. Yeah, but, I mean, he it, might be. Who knows? He's, he's running. And they go... And, and the only person that clicks onto what's going on is Aragon and he goes I've got a bow I so he does have a bow but, <laughs> <laughs> but screams to Legolas who's an unbelievable shot shoot him and Aragon shoot goes him. well I'm not going to use this bow I'm going to put he's that got back. his sword now he's got yeah, his, he's sword. Got sword. his sword it's all kicking off he's got enough to worry about yeah, come True. On. Yeah, yeah. stop having a go so at him Legolas get rid of him because it is going down. Yeah, something's about to happen. Yeah. Doesn't can't be good. This whatever is happening here, I don't know what He's it is. Got a it cannot be good. And they are not. Guy Fawkes wasn't even around at this point. So, what is going on? No, you're really upsetting him now. Hey, what are you doing? <laughs> you're upsetting him. You're not taking this it seriously. This is topical. Ridiculous. Topical. Yeah. Guy how, Fawkes. How yeah. Is, how is Guy Fawkes topical? When's fireworks thing? November the fifth. Oh, it's remember, cool. remember. And it was about four hundred years ago. Yeah. Mm. When was the uh, Battle of Helm's Deep? <laughs> At least 1,400 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> At See, least. There's a four in there, though. Okay. But <laughs> Legolas fires three shots and it still well, doesn't stop him. He does hit him, though, doesn't he? Oh, but yeah. He just can't kill him. He hits him three times. I've, people always have a big issue with this. Mm. But Boromir got hit by a billion or so arrows and kept on fighting. So I'm like... Mm. Yeah. Although I suppose he wasn't being shot by Legolas. Yeah. If he just got him on the head, he would have fallen and... Everything would have been fine. Yeah. But, but to be fair, though, I mean, I imagine just another one of them would have Yeah, there must be limitless. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so this is Saruman's blasting fire, which they've none of them have ever seen before. What, what I love about this, so as soon as it blows up, I mean, amazingly filmed. Unbelievable like, bit of film. It, Again, it's the actual model laugh? that they're destroying. Did you laugh so watching him get run in and then <laughs> just blow up? No! Really? Are you I found joking? it hilarious. He's just sprinting, he just goes... Oh, well, the way that he throws yeah, himself the in. Way the way that he throws, throws himself, himself in is, is great. Hilarious. It's like, yeah, yeah. I'm going for it, I'm going for it. <laughs> it's like he'd it's been, my time! I imagine, I imagine that he'd been up all night going, right, I'm going to go in, I'm going to go yeah, in. I'm going to do it a really cool way. It's going to be epic. I'm not just going to put it down, I'm going to throw myself right at <laughs> it. Oh. I remember just being like, it's ridiculous. Yeah, does the job though, doesn't it? That's the job, then. What I love is that the fear on Theoden's oh. face when he sees this completely changes. Yeah. And... He's because he's just gone. Is this it? 
Is, is this, this all, all you can, can muster, Saruman? He Which thinks he's, they're actually going to be all right. Tempting fate. Yeah, I mean, it is. No, and then that happens. Easy. And the wall is blown sky high. Yeah. Yeah. It's unbelievable. And the water starts, the, the little water. streams comes through, and then all of the Orokai just start yeah. smashing through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, Oh, my God. They destroyed the model for that yeah. shot, the destruction oh God, shot. It's just wow. the model being destroyed. Mm. It looks incredible. And Gimli, the psycho, jumps down. Yeah. And gets it, yeah. and then <laughs> gets all wet. Legolas just does his surfing moment. Oh yeah, thoughts oh, on I that? I love that. Oh, of course you love surfing that. Surfing down the stairs on a sh- on a, a shield, shield yeah. completely oh, unnecessary. Come on, uh, on a shield, amazing. Again, I mean, I'm not light, a fan of these moments. Showing how light he is on his feet once again. If we're going to go back to that. And then he's meant to be very agile, which he is. Yes. Mm-hmm. Why not use a shield to go down super fast? I knew you'd love that. Why? I knew you'd that love that. That is a new kind of thing. It really is. It's brilliant. If I to was be, making to a be film, fair, I would actually, just see those scenes. I, I absolutely, I, I did really like it. There's only one legless Come on, moment it is in the entire brilliant. three films. What is it? The Oliphant? Yeah. Yeah, it's too much. When it's, jumps, yeah, that's the extension. When he that's jumps the on the Mumma Kill, I'm just like, oh, Mumma Kill, yeah. yeah, this is a joke. Yeah. <laughs> so, I take you don't like the Battle of Five Armies, then. No. That's, a, that's a story for another day. Who likes the Battle of oh, Five Armies? This is it's like talking terrible. about the, the uh, sequel trilogy. Don't tempt me here. Yeah. But that happens, and then we have this fantastic charge, which I think um, Aragorn does that charge, and that's a beautiful <laughs> moment where the uh, elves take out their swords all together. Oh, yeah. They're so unified, I love that. Yeah, the elves are great. And they just smash right in, but there's that little... Um, the camera kind of pans out, and you can see that they have no chance. Oh, absolutely. And there's it? more and more of them pouring in all the time. Yeah. Yeah, they need to get out of there, essentially. Yeah. Out of them! Out of there! That's a different part of the film, but it's yeah. fine. It still works, but, um, though. And then we jump over. What about Haldir? Hang on. Yeah, we okay, fine. Hang on. We, we need to go to Asgillioth. Okay. So... <laughs> Nazgul! Oh, the really Nazgul cool. There. The Nazgul in this film, we've not talked about them at all, um, but obviously they were flying over them in the dead marshes. Yeah. How do we feel about them? The the um. I love them. I think it's so really. Well, the Nazgul is the name of what they are riding. It's yeah. not the actual. Oh well, no! It's the other way around. It's the other it? way around. Yeah, the mounts are, 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 are just called fell beasts. The Nazgul are the the ring race. That's right. But he, there is a line in the film where he says. Um, do not stand in the way of um, the Nazgul and it's pretty talking about himself really yeah that's a bit of a bizarre way to talk <laughs> <laughs> that's like me going don't stand between Ben and his food have you met Gollum well I know but Gollum is different to those <laughs> guys I'm oh, sorry guys unbelievable <laughs> unnecessary <laughs> you know what nonsense. it's been you you are the problem in it's this entire one. this entire one when we get to the MCU to I'm gonna just go mad no, you're I could just blink in and Go. I haven't effed or jeffed this whole show. You know what you just did? What? It started it off with you. You've done it at the start as well. I didn't do it at the start. You did. What did I say? Let's not go into it now. Right, okay, come on. Unbelievable. So, but yeah, the Nazgul are knocking about. I'm not enjoying this one. The Nazgul is just <laughs> doing this fantastic little uh, flight. Like, <laughs> you say flight. that I'm bad. It that went, wasn't his finest moment. Uh, it's because you've not, you've not me for you've seven. Not- <laughs> um, but... Frodo obviously walks up the steps and yeah. he's standing there confronted with the Nazgul and the ring wraith. Yeah. And he takes the ring off and just starts doing his old... So for, for, for the film where he never puts the ring on, there's a, the ring still has a huge amount of power in this film mm. over all sorts of people. It's really interesting that, I'm going to compare it to the books, the ring in the books is, is more about the knowledge of its power and what it can do. In the films, it really is that it has this aura of control yeah. that it affects Faramir in that way that it doesn't in the book. He's able to intellectualise it more. I also it's think wonderful. this is why Askeleth is getting... As soon as they arrive, this oh, is yeah. why Askeleth is getting worse. Yeah. Because they're, that's probably why the Nazgul come, because they sense. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they sense it. And they went searching for it over the dead marshes. Yeah. Why would they go there? There's no one there. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. they're why being drawn they by the ring. Because they always are. Yeah. A so, bit like the Dementors. The Dementors! The Dementors! <laughs> <laughs> What's it like in prison, Michael? Well, it, it's terrible. Why? Because of the Dementors! They're everywhere! <laughs> they suck the soul out of you! It's the Office US. Oh, right. You call it the Office US? I find yeah, it. I have to. Because I have so much. It's illegal reasons. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, and then... The, the Nazgul gets so close, he's about to put it on his finger. Yeah. He's there. The, it's the Witch King, I think. Yeah. And, yeah, is I think it is the Witch King. Uh, yeah. Of Agma. Agma, I don't know. Agma. Yeah. 
But <laughs> yeah. bizarre. But yeah, and then Sam comes in, knocks him down, yeah. and this is where we get this beautiful speech. Yeah. But just before that speech, yeah, you see the ring is okay. This is really not going well for Frodo because he pulls his sword out on Sam, yeah. screams at him, and he has a sword. A wild moment. The same way it's that he said to Gollum. It's me. It's, it's your Sam. Sam. Don't you know your Sam? Oh, in fairness, I think Sean Astin in this film is tremendous. Brilliant. He's just tremendous. There he's it is. There, sitting there. And you'll read the story of this speech, which is coming up mm. uh, in this. He, because he was, he, we know that Sa- that Sean Astin is a little bit of a neurotic sort of fellow. Uh, he worries about an awful lot of things. He does. I mean, they all they loved him for it, but he's a real worrier. Uh, and he was worried that that Sam wasn't being properly represented in the film, which yeah. I really like. Um, and then when this these sides came through for this speech he was beyond excited as you'll mm. find out when you get there and in fairness it's one of the highlights of the whole film I love it it's I remember, a wonderful speech yeah, it used to make me so emotional when oh. I was younger, my God. Well, still now actually I think it's such yes. a lovely speech yeah it's, it's beautiful because it, among all this war and fighting that's happened there's a bit of uh, home and friendship that comes yeah. from that, Sam that's why like, it's so there's something good it's, in this yeah. world it's so perfectly it's perfect because there's literally what 15 minutes left of the film yeah, yeah. and no one is winning. No. Yeah. The Nazgul are there. Oskilith is about to get destroyed. Helm's Deep is pretty much done. Yeah, that's it. Um, you don't really know what's happening with Isengard. Yeah. Like, and then suddenly Sam comes out with a speech, and you just that's just good, that's got to be up there with some of the best movie speeches. Mm. Ever. I think it's it is. And as it's a complete think. creation, you're like amazing. Yeah. It's just, it's just mm. phenomenal. Like you compare it to. Um, let's compare it to the later series of Game of Thrones when they lose the source material. Yeah. It never compares the writing. Um, there are f- hints and flashes, but there's nothing like this. Why well, is that? Like Jon Snow used to have some fantastic moments, like his conversations with Mance Raider and stuff. Like yeah, that were epic. so interesting. And so then suddenly, in season eight, when he finds out that he's actually a Targaryen, and the yeah. com- you think, wow, the conversation between Danny and him are going to be incredible. Yeah. And all he ever says is, "I don't want to be king." Yeah. And it's not Sam. Yeah, 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 Sam. I don't want to be king. <laughs> John, I don't want from? the throne. I don't want it. I've never wanted it. And he repeats that about 50 times. He does. <laughs> just get him in once and just keep reading the same line. He <laughs> does want a bit of Danny, though. He does. Oh, he does. does. Bless him. But yeah, so He's only human. we do that speech and then we're, we're back at Helm's Deep and <laughs> yeah. everything's going to hell. Yeah. They've had to retreat, pull back. Right into the castle. Um, And it's just... Everyone is about to lose. I yeah. think it's that, isn't it? It's that feeling of they've... Yeah, they, they've been fighting yeah. and fighting to survive and get through. Exactly. They're trying to make a stand of it, and there's there's no chance. Yeah. They were, the, everyone has lost. They're boarding up the door, and in a very similar way, they're just left in the Great Hall now. They're the last yeah. thing that stands between tomb. them and the women and children. Yeah. And then Aragon just does this turn. He just says the line, ride out. Ride out with me. And then you just see it in theatre and like, yes. Yes! And then, <laughs> yes. He it. says it like that. Yes! It's great. And Gimli goes to blow the horn and you yeah. just think, well, they're going to go out in a blaze of glory then. And yeah. in a weird way they do, they kind of, as soon as they come out and that music hits. Oh my God. They're, the music is back yeah. at that point. And because like, that's an epic moment. Exactly. And it's given you a little tingle underneath. And yeah. You think, What's about to happen? Oh, it's wonderful. It's Now it reminds me of, and speaking of another um, IP, uh, Harry Potter. Do you remember that bit in? Um, it must be in the. Was it in the Half Blood Prince or is it in? No, it must be in the Deathly Hallows. He's talking to Dumbledore, and it's about facing your death and either being dragged out or walking out to face it with your head held high. And they seem like they're going to be the same thing because you get end up in the same place. Yeah. But Harry knew, as his parents knew, there was all the difference in the world. Yeah. It's that same yeah. thing. Yeah, you're yeah. going to meet it head on, or you're going to be dragged to your death. Yeah. Definitely. It's that. It's that moment of honor and of pride, and that's what the music is. Is that isn't when? It? Is that after he meets Dumbledore in, in that kind King's of King's Cross mid yeah. kind of section limbo. between death? Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's that limbo moment. Limbo. And then he's like, he's I'm going to go back and under, face him. Under the thing. Yeah. Yeah, the little baby, yeah. the horrible well, yeah. baby. Well, that's that's the part of Voldemort that's inside Harry. Yeah, yeah, it is. Which he needs to destroy. Yeah. Well, which he has destroyed because yeah, it's dying at that point, yeah. isn't it? It's horrible. Yeah. The horrible husk. But yeah, isn't it interesting? That's yeah. a real thing so that, they, that comes up. They ride out, and you see them, you know, riding down that little ramp bit yeah. in the front. The music's going crazy. Oh. And you think this is how they go then. Yeah. And then they're fighting, and then suddenly this the light, this angelic kind of music just rises up, and you see. Uh, Gandalf there on Shadowfax, and then Eomir rides next yeah. to him. What's he saying? Gandalf Stand says, alone. "The Elden King stands alone, not alone." Oh. Rohirrim. 
Man! And then the slow then, motion ride. It's, oh. I mean, it's quite a hill that they ride. Yeah, down, it's like honest. this. It's My so God! If you're driving through Crikey. a street, that's got to be at least eighty percent. Yeah, yeah, that's wow. crazy. Oh, goodness <laughs> the me! The horses are good stuff. Yeah, it's but, slow motion. Oh, and then they come out with the pikes. Yeah, they're ready. And then that light just shines yeah. in them, and you see it close up, blinding them. them. Yeah. And Gandalf is the first one to hit yeah. them. He lifts his horse and bang. And straight in, it's fantastic. Amazing. Because you had forgotten about Gandalf at that yeah. point. He, they'd yeah. sown the seeds because he said, look to my coming at the thir- first light on the fourth day. But we'd forgotten about that, of course we had. And it's this moment of, they've been in the nitty gritty and they've been in this horrible, mm. destructive um, mud, rain, all of the awful stuff. And suddenly Gandalf yeah. is there. And the, literally the light comes from the dark. And it's dawn that saves them in the end. And Sam says, a new day will come. And when it comes, the sun will shine out the clearer. And it's the same... It's, it's, oh, it's, it, it, it's poetic, it runs side by side and yeah. rhymes in that yeah. way. Beautiful. And then straight cut from, I think you have like two seconds of Gandalf and the Rohan fighting yeah. the Urukai, and you jump straight to Isengard, mm. and there you see the Ents yeah. Yeah. smashing Ripping up the it apart. And they no one can stand against the Ents. And they break yeah. open the dam, and yeah. also one of my favourite things is the Ent that's on fire. Yeah, he, just, he puts it's himself in, dips his head. Brilliant. Uh, of the, course, that's how he puts himself. The dam yeah. moment, though, is beautiful. Amazing. When yeah. they break the dam. Oh, and the water's flowing all through yeah. uh, and across their, uh, their legs and the yeah. But we're fine with trees. And it's something natural that puts out the fire, which is unnatural yeah. in this instance. And Isn't also, that cool? I loved, which is in the extended edition, at the end of Helm's Deep, yeah. where the Uruks are all running. Yeah. And then the Rohirrim chase them down a little yeah. bit and then stop and back off. Yeah. Because Eomer knows what's happening and suddenly there's this forest. Yeah. And it's it's Fangorn forest yeah. that's, that's spread to that point. Yeah. And they're the trees are called the horns. Yeah. And they're, they're a bit, they're the trees that the Ents heard. Mm. Uh, and they, you know, they, they're not as intelligent as the Ents are. They're not fully sentient, but they, they've got this, um, this sort of collective consciousness, yeah. consciousness, yeah. and they want to take their part as well. And yeah, it's them that finish them off. Maybe. How awesome is that? It's Maybe. nature that finishes off this unnatural thing of Saruman. Exactly. Yeah, this kind of age of steel and iron gets yeah. destroyed by nature. It can't, yeah. They can't. Yeah, they can't stand against it in the end. And yeah. oh, it's brilliant. So the whole film then is finished. It's been epic. Yeah. And it's ended with just this little walk in the woods. And Gollum is just ahead of them. Oh, yeah. And Gollum is talking about where he's leading them, because obviously Faramir questions where he's leading them. Yeah. But he's still got this fight between himself. Yeah. And, Follow me. And then you realise, OK, Gollum has won in terms of his... Yeah, the subtle... ...fight against Smeagol and, yeah. Smeagol and Gollum. Gollum has won this. Mm-hmm. He knows exactly what's going to happen. Yeah, it's true. It's, it's, it's that moment where Frodo betrayed him or so he saw to Faramir I think yeah. that's when it turns because yeah. before then he was more Smeagol than Gollum mm. and then when Frodo gave him up that was it yeah oh it's just brilliant but yeah so the subtle player Gollum wins when all the big players the Eurokine mm. lose oh. so it's like you have that moment of hope and then you're like oh actually but it's still, not over yet he has the most important moment in this at the end because yeah everyone has won but he's the one that could still yeah. stop all of this. Yeah, all the battles he's are irrelevant the... compared yeah. to the ring. Yeah, and, and we go on. Well, I was just saying, it's just a, it's just beautifully acted. Oh, absolutely. Him going up against the trees and just yeah. hiding, and we've got that little speech behind again about whether it would be in books, yeah, and stuff like that, or write any stories. Yeah, and there's that. It sees so you see that Frodo's kind of brought him back. Sam has brought Frodo back yeah. a bit and there's that friendship there again which is lovely but then you've got Gollum, Gollum sneaking around yeah yeah absolutely and then we get Gandalf saying doing his Churchill moment the battle for Helm's Deep is over the battle for Middle Earth is it's about to begin. To a good Ian McKellen as well. That's Thank true. you. It's a mixture the of eyes Ian as well. McKellen of, oh yeah, he's got. He and does the, do big yeah, eyes in that eyes, moment. Yeah. He just holds his big eyes. He lets you see right in. It's very so nice. That's favorite moment. <sighs> God, it's tricky. As we're uh, it's the shield. Up. It's the shield. Oh, the shield is God. your favourite moment <laughs> of the right. entire film. Oh um, please! No, I would, no, I'd say uh, the Battle of Helm's Deep in general. For me, right? You just love the there. battle because it's just awesome. I mean, it's got it's epic. We've talked about it. Yeah. yeah. Oh God, I don't know. I think the moment where the wall explodes. Yeah. Is yeah, that's heavy. It's it's out of this world. It's yeah. absolutely out of this world. Jinx. I love Sam's speech. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I You're think, right. Yeah. You're right. Sam's speech. Is 
I think, no, actually, I'm going to swap to that as well. I, I think, think that's better. I'd like that, to swap to that. that isn't isn't that, that amazing? I watch it on YouTube all that the isn't time. Sam yeah. speaking. That's Tolkien speaking through Sam. Mm. Of either in these dire situations. Yeah, there is there's something to hold on to. It's so sweet. Oh, it's wonderful. It is absolutely wonderful. Which, yeah, it was a game changer for me, especially yeah. in that situation. It was but, amazing. So this is so we've, we talked about the Empire Strikes Back. We fin- finished it. We returned the Jedi. We got Return of the yeah. King to come. Oh, this is a very different middle film to Empire Strikes Back. And in fact, George Lucas said that because George Lucas knew he had his reveal of Darth Vader being Luke's father coming. So he got all the big action stuff out of the way early. Mm, yeah. Whereas the typical thing is obviously to have it at the end. I yeah. think this is the perfect example of that typical mm. thing. Because yeah. in the books, Helm's Deep isn't as big as, as you would imagine. No, um, right. And it runs on and we get Isengard, Saruman being killed in the Two Towers book. But here it, it really climaxes with Helm's Deep. And it's, will it ever be done as well? I've never seen it done better. I don't know. Before or since. It's because it's out of this world. Empire and Two Towers have very different yet similar endings. Yeah, yeah. Because so they know that there's just something bigger to come. Yeah. yeah. It's like it sows the seeds for the final film. Yeah. And they so, survived again. Yeah. Luke survives against Darth Vader. Exactly. Just. They just survived they against just the Urukai. Yeah. yeah. And it's very interesting. It's all I mean like in Empire, you know, Luke survives. The others survive. There's a possibility for Han. Yeah, yeah, we don't know, know about him. Leia and Lando, they've all managed to get away. Um, C-3PO is back together. Yeah. And like in Helm's Deep, all of them have survived. Yeah. But there's just that little twinkle that, okay, this is nowhere near over. No, no, absolutely. If we want and they've been changed as well yeah. by what's happened. Massive. Yeah, changed. I think that, that's, that's a bit... Th- like with Merry and Pippin, with all of those, that innocence... Yeah. Has, completely gone yeah, yeah absolutely there's no innocence they there. sort of know what they have to do and what they have to deal with now and I yeah. suppose Luke losing his hand is a bit like Frodo Frodo being at the throat of Sam is yeah. the yeah. polar opposite to what you'd ever imagine exactly yeah you know that. It, it, so they, they really do it's just, it's just a, it's a big journey of a movie in both cases yeah which yeah. is what you want yeah goodness me what a film, boys. Lord of the Rings. What the a film. Two Towers. We Whenever we talk about any two of these. Towers, Lord of the Rings. Two Towers is done. Oh. We did part one. This was part two. We're done. I know Master's I mean, doing two right. parts. Huh? Master's doing two yeah. parts. Yeah, you're right. Return of the King. Do we think we're going to be able to do that in two parts? Return of the King is a big film. Big stuff. It's a huge I film. I really don't know. Should we Let's just get together in, for three hours and then just do, do it in one part? Oh, that'd be lovely. Do the longest podcast. Bloody hell. <laughs> Oh. So, guys, right. that about wraps it up, doesn't mm. it? I mean, wow, what a journey we've it been on. It does indeed. It so, does. Two Towers is coming out. Yeah. What's coming next, Brian? I'll tell you what it is. It's only Game of Thrones. Game it of is. Thrones season one. i got to watch one. this again so I can wear it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Game of Thrones. Or not. No, do watch it. Yeah, yeah I probably yeah, should, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Game of Thrones season one yeah. will be coming out this weekend. So we're sort of treating it as a film, aren't we? As like well, it, it, We're going to look at it as a season. whole season. We're not going to look at it where it's scene by scene. No, no. I we're think looking it's, at bigger arcs and characters. Yeah, it, it's but a, we're not going to dissect every episode no. in, in the sense that we have done with these. Ones. I, think yes. we'd more, I do want to compare it to Lord of the Rings, especially oh, though. Yeah. Well, Game of Thrones is such a massive comparison. Yeah. And George R. R. Martin talks about Tolkien. Oh, non-stop. he's obsessed with him. He called himself George R. R. Martin because of J. R. Tolkien. Yeah, I mean, there you go. Really? But, yeah, um, that is legitimately true. But you're, fan you're a boy. Yeah, he's a, he's oh, a big he's, Tolkien he's a fanboy. Yeah. Fan there's, um, there's only one thing he didn't like. Yeah, go on. And that was well, two things. It's the, it's the shield, isn't it? I bet it was a fact that... <laughs> <laughs> I bet he hated the shield. Uh, that was. Is there any moment like the shield in uh, Game of Thrones? Probably in the latest no. seasons in Venice. Oh, in the latest seasons, there's some stupid <laughs> stuff. Yeah, little girl does take down a giant, to be fair. I mean... Yeah, yeah she does die, though. Yeah, but in an but, epic way. You know, I mean, if comparing to the shield, I find the shield more believable than I do... What, like a hundred thousand Dothraki yeah. being completely decimated yeah. in one charge, yeah. and then suddenly in the final episode of the f- of the damn series, there's half of them there still. Yeah. No, <laughs> no, no, no. Gosh. That isn't right. how it okay. works. Can't wait for no, this. we're not going to talk about Can't Game of Thrones yet. We, this has been eight days of geek. My goodness, we finished. My yeah. goodness. My goodness. <laughs> so later on this week, it's going to be. Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones. Game of this will come wow. out when it comes out. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> In the future. The near future. <laughs> uh, but, yeah. 
Wow, crikey, it's been a journey, isn't it? I tell you what, I have been Benjamin Fryer. Who have you been over there, you I've cheeky been, little boy? I've been AJ Jenks. <laughs> and what about you, you little silly thing? I've been Christopher Weeks. Crikey. Thank you to all our listeners, our subscribers. If you uh, are listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or YouTube, just subscribe. Come on, subscribe. and spread the word. Spread the word. Be we, geeks with us. We like being geeks. We want to make this big. Yeah, you know, big. Big, 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 big. Upper, upper, upper. Big like an olive hand. Yeah. An olive hand. My old girlfriend never going to believe me. Jeez. <laughs> on that note, we'll see you later on the week. If he says a line like that, that would be amazing. What? Even though if Sam actually said, Oh, yeah. My gaffer would never believe me. Peter Jackson would be going, like, Oh, I'm not sure I made the right choice here, guys. What would a Welsh Sam sound like? Well, my old gaffer would never believe me. It's pretty good, you know. That there's something worth fighting for. Eight days again.